the Apple Watch is one of the few product categories that I believe Apple absolutely dominates. It has no competition. And with every iteration, the Apple Watch has become less and less dependent on an iPhone. So ever since Apple introduced cellular connectivity on the Apple Watch, I always wondered if I could go an entire day using only an Apple Watch. So I decided to find out. In this video, I want to take you through my entire day in first person view and give you real time battery updates as they happened. Let's go. So my day began at 9.30 in the morning with an alarm that I had set the previous night. I checked the upcoming weather for the day, fed my cat Tiger, and I got ready to head out. My first stop of the day was my morning workout at the gym. I headed out right at 10 a.m. and to my surprise my battery was already down to 92% without much activity. I did turn off Wi-Fi on the house and I am running the always on display so I suspected this was going to be a problem. I arrived at the gym and hooked up a pair of second generation AirPods to the watch for my music. Inside the gym, I was bummed to find out that my service was actually pretty terrible. I received a few messages and using Siri and my AirPods, I tried to reply using dictation, but I was unable to get it to work. So I began my workout around 10.20, at which point I was down to 83% battery and only about one bar of signal. Siri dictation still refused to work. This was a major problem because I needed to send somebody an address immediately. As you can see here, Siri was unable to translate a single word I was speaking due to the unreliable connection I had. I used the workout app to track my current workout, which has the ability to track a Stairmaster workout. It's not able to track other workouts, however, like lifting weights. I finished up at 10.45 a.m. and up until this point I had sent and received 8 messages, made one phone call, listened to music for about an hour, and had 10 minutes of GPS directions to the gym. That cost me a total of 35% of my battery so far, leaving me at 65 for the rest of the day. I headed home to get ready for church, which started at 11.15 in the morning. Apple's built-in calendar integration was very nice, which gave me a reminder at what time I should leave in order to make it on time. I rushed into the shower and used Waterlog to disable the touch screen while I showered. After I got out and deactivated Waterlog, the Apple Watch actually pushed out the water using sound. Pretty cool. I was running late because, well not even an Apple Watch can help fix who I am, but the bigger problem here was that I was already down to 55% battery, having only sent an additional 7 messages and made 2 quick phone calls. Not looking good so far. Once I arrived at church, I was able to put my watch into theater mode, which puts the ringer to silent and turns off the screen completely unless you intentionally tap on it. It's really great for environments just like church or even visiting the movies. After I was out, after having only sent one quick message, I was down to 47% battery. I was onto my next errand, but I had to make a quick stop first. I pulled into the first gas station I could find, with debit card in hand, but was pleasantly surprised to find out that Apple Pay was supported right there at the gas pump. Really neat touch, but I'm definitely not quite ready to leave my wallet at home just yet. Now at this point, because I felt that my battery was draining way too fast, I thought maybe something was eating away at the battery in the background, so I decided to power my Apple Watch off and back on to see if this helped any but the soft reset actually made it worse and took a good chunk of my remaining battery. I was now at 37% and it was only noon. So I made the heartbreaking decision to turn off the always on display to preserve what little battery I had left. Now at this point it became obvious that I should be doing everything to maximize battery. However, because this test is supposed to determine if the Apple Watch could keep up with the way that I would normally use it on a daily basis, I decided to just keep using it without thinking about the consequences on the battery life. While I waited to get a haircut, I headed over to the App Store on the watch for the first time. I didn't have a smartphone to entertain myself, so I checked out the game section on the Apple Watch. All the games required a purchase, and it just didn't feel worth it to kill 5 minutes, so I decided to pass. 
Now, some app notifications were disappointing, like the fact that YouTube Studio doesn't display an entire comment. But on the other hand, it was super cool to be able to receive and watch an entire video sent by a family member right on the watch. Not ideal by any means, but it felt a little futuristic. It was now 1.40 in the afternoon, and after browsing the app store for less than a minute and exchanging a total of 14 messages, my battery was screaming at me. With only 18% remaining, I continued my day without flinching. I paid using Apple Pay once more and headed to a convenience store right around the corner. At this point, I realized just how widely adopted Apple Pay had become. I hadn't had to use my debit card one single time today so far. At exactly 2.13 p.m., my watch gave me the typical low battery notification. At this point, I had completed two Apple Pay transactions along with 15 more messages and was down to 8%. But things were actually going as planned. I'll tell you why in a second. So I was back on the road again, and after setting a quick reminder, I headed home since I had some time to spare. Now, although the Apple Watch clearly won't last you an entire day, you will probably at some point have a break where you can set your Apple Watch down on its charger for 10 to 20 minutes. And that's exactly what I had the opportunity to do at this time. When I arrived home, I had about an hour to spare before my next errand. My watch only had 5% battery at the time, but I figured I could use a break from the outside world while I made something to eat. So I set it down on its charger, hoping it would give me enough juice to last me the rest of the day. At around 4 o'clock, I was ready to leave again, and my watch had juiced up to 34%. I hopped in the car and immediately had to make a phone call to the place we were heading to. With my AirPods in, I asked Siri to call the place I needed to speak with. It was able to search and find the place, but the call failed. No problem, I attempted a second time, but it failed once more. I toggled airplane mode on and off to see if it would connect with another cell tower, but it made no difference. This was a huge disappointment and quite frankly would have been a major problem if I hadn't been able to borrow a phone. I gave in and made the call using the borrowed iPhone. Around 5.30, I was once again reminded how useless some notifications were, like the fact that I couldn't actually check my ring camera when it gave me a notification. At this time, I was now down to 18% battery with one phone call attempted and 8 messages sent. The next 30 minutes or so were spent sending a total of 22 messages, which drained my battery down to 10%. By 7pm, I was left with 2% battery and inevitably, power reserve mode kicked in. I arrived back home around 7.30 in the evening with my watch still in power reserve mode, which means all I could do was just check the time. Luckily for me, my day was over, but I can't help but wonder what I would have done if I was far from home and needed to communicate with somebody. In total for the day, I sent and received 82 messages, made 4 phone calls, 3 Apple Pay transactions, set 2 reminders, listened to 1 hour of music, and received about 10 minutes of GPS directions. So as we wrap up, it comes as no surprise that the Apple Watch is not ready to replace your phone yet. Not just due to the lack of battery, but also because most notifications can't be interacted with. But was the Apple Watch ever supposed to replace your phone to begin with? I think we all know the answer to that is no. It works phenomenally in certain situations where you want to leave your phone in the car, for example the gym, but for the majority of your day, please bring your phone with you and don't forget your wallet.